Hey, Space Lab, Michael from Vsauce here to answer more of your questions. Our first question today comes from Gold Stud, who asked, if there was a second moon, how would that affect things on Earth? Well, the biggest question is, how big is this second moon going to be? If it's small, like as small as one of Mars's moons, its effect on Earth wouldn't be as dramatic. Interesting note about the size of our moon, the one that we know and love, the amount of space in the sky that it takes up from Earth is almost exactly the same as the amount of space the sun takes up, which is why solar eclipses on Earth are so incredible. Now, if we had two moons, the chances of solar eclipses happening would obviously be higher, which would be awesome, but if that moon was large, as large as our moon or even larger, it could drastically affect our tides and possibly even the Earth's rotation, which would affect our seasons. But, you know, more solar eclipses, yeah. We had a few questions last time about cosmic consciousness. Now, I did a video on consciousness before. Consciousness is our awareness, not only of what's going on around us, but our awareness that we are aware of those things. But a cosmic consciousness is a notion that perhaps one day, we will be able to develop the ability to know everything, to be aware of every single thing and every other person. Now, unfortunately, the human brain might be a bottleneck here because recent research has found that given the number of cells in our brains, one person's brain can only hold roughly 10 to 100 terabytes of data, which is a lot, but it's not everything. Also interesting is the fact that because of Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, even if we were to know the exact location of every single particle in the universe, we would not be able to have full certainty about their velocities or where to expect to see them next. Finally, the question with the most thumbs up, which no matter what it is, I am obligated to answer. It's a cool one. The question is, if things can't go faster than the speed of light because your mass increases as you get faster and you need infinite energy to do so, why can't things with no mass go faster? Well, Neth Dugan, they can. That's right. Even though a particle can't exist that doesn't have mass, or volume, or energy, because of course energy and mass are the same thing, something that has no mass, something that carries no information, can travel faster than the speed of light. Here's an example. If I were to have a laser pointer that I could actually project onto the moon from the surface of Earth, a really powerful laser pointer, and then I just smoothed it, smoothed it, and then I quickly flicked my wrist and caused that dot on the moon to go from one side to the other, it could technically get from point A to point B, other sides of the moon, faster than light. But keep in mind, it's not a continuous stream of photons, and so I'm not transmitting information, but I am causing something to appear and then appear somewhere else faster than light could have done the same. Okay, be sure to ask more questions in the comments below, and we will pick two questions that we find particularly fun to answer next time, and the question with the most thumbs up will be answered next time. So be sure to subscribe to Space Lab, and as always, thanks for watching.